Before we get the video started, I really wanted to take a second to say wow and thank you to everyone. Um, the sub count went up about almost 100 from the last video. Um, so that was just mind blowing and incredible. And then the views and the shares and the comments, it was just, it was really awesome. And it was such a warm welcome and I really appreciate it. There's, I can't say it enough. You definitely made me feel welcome and I'm glad I have content for you guys. And I want to keep growing this channel and keep making stuff and, and really just grow the community. So I got a lot of stuff planned. I hope you guys stick around. But in the meantime, thanks for stopping again, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Okay guys, sorry for the last injection, but hopefully it's worth it. I waited to post the video because I just got this figure in the mail, and I wanted to show it off to you guys and how it looked in the Hall of Armor. This is a really neat figure, and I'm glad I waited because this definitely has its place, and I wanted to ride the hype train. Everyone was getting it. I saw everyone post it on Instagram, and I decided I'm going to show y'all how it looks. It is a cool figure. It poses really well. Definitely a Hasbro W, no doubt, and it looks great. I was worried that it wasn't going to fit in my spots, but sure enough, it does, and it looks like it belongs just like the rest of them, and uh, it looks great. I'm really happy I waited to post this because it looks perfect. Uh, you won't see him in the rest of the video because I recorded a lot of the content before I got him, but there he is. I hope you guys like it and enjoy the video. What's going on, you guys? Welp and Web Snapper bringing you the do-it-yourself hall of armor now this was a very daunting challenge but i think pretty rewarding as well hope you guys agree with me on that this was uh more challenging for sure it caused me a lot of stress and disappointment and but at the end of the day it was kind of really rewarding to see how this came out and it's cheap and uh very doable and hopefully by the end of this video you guys will learn from all the mistakes i've made and be able to do yours even better and i also really wanted to um let you guys know i really anytime you do anything that in, or you get inspired from these videos feel free to dm me any pictures um again the instagram is just wallop and web snappers uh one word and the it is also in my bio but I really want you guys to feel free to kind of keep in contact. I'm it's a small enough community where we can I can easily respond. There's not it's not overwhelming or anything like that. So feel free to send me any displays and um, anything that you guys end up attempting based off of my video. That would be really cool. And I can also show it off on the channel as well and point people your direction. I think that would be really cool. But let's get into this. It has a lot of um, just kind of I would say options of how you can display it uh, right now I just had the Tony Stark there with the briefcase him looking at the armor reminiscing there's a lot of cool stuff you can do but how do we get here well I was spending some time reading a ton of Iron Man comics after I became kind of disenfranchised with modern Spider-Man comics and I'd been reading a lot of epic collections and um, I just kind of really got into the Iron Man vibe for a little bit and um, I was realizing that I like probably many of you have a few great Iron Man armors that are just sitting in a storage place and I wanted to bring them out and create the Hall of Armor right it's iconic um, so I also based off of my inspiration off of this kind of art piece by Bob Layton probably the most iconic Iron Man artist outside of the classics and no, he easily is a classic but um, this just this really just um, kind of caught my attention and I like the simplicity of it I wanted to buy the Disney toy box Hall of Armor uh, and I wanted to go and look it up I mean this was my initial thought was I want a Hall of Armor I want to buy this and so I quickly went to eBay and unfortunately the ones that were listed were kind of too expensive for my taste for a Hall of Armor and uh, but I wanted to also see if maybe it was just the ones that were listed and maybe I could haggle the price down but unfortunately the prices for the ones that had sold aren't 
super cheap or in my price range or something that I want to pay for either. But that was fine. I wanted to go and check Amazon and make sure I had exhausted all the resources as of the time of this recording. It is Prime Day, so maybe I'd get a deal. So, of course, I go, search it up, and actually, to my surprise, nothing comes up. Nothing. So, that is odd. I'm uh, kind of a bummer. So, I kind of came to the conclusion that, well, this isn't going to be something I can just buy. So, I realized I'm going to have to go and make this thing myself. I also wanted to show you guys that I have a Pinterest account. And this is where I definitely recommend if you want helps on poses, um, inspiration for group shots, character studies, anything. Definitely check this out. I have it broken down um, between probably my favorite characters. Um, I also have Transformers, My Hero, um, I think some Star Wars, Boba Fett, X-Men, you know, team, stuff like that. I definitely recommend you go check that out. It can also inspire you guys to make your own props too for each character if you feel like a figure is lacking accessories. So I wanted to take a second to also show you guys what you might want to have if you're going to construct this. So starting out, you're going to want styrofoam blocks. Preferably, you can do thicker ones for the bottom. So two sizes, a thicker one and a thinner one. You're going to also want sandpaper to sand down the um, any rough edges that you get from cutting. You'll see kind of what I'm talking about later on in the video, but you're going to want that. You're going to want a foam or multi-purpose craft glue. That's one way. Normal glue can either mess with the styrofoam or ruin it. So you're going to want those. Uh, a paintbrush that you're okay with ruining in case you don't rinse the glue out fast enough. That is something you want. And then the background that you saw in, earlier, kind of the background, I guess, of the, the armor cells was uh, kind of iridescent, just paper that I got from craft store. This is all easily obtainable from the craft store. And I just recommend hoarding styrofoam too. That could come in handy. And lastly, if you don't have sandpaper, a lighter can work or any type really and that will kind of take place of the sanding technique which i will show you guys later on the completed unit um minus the backdrop which is going to be this sheet of paper um so as you can see we have um it's two layers two stories um depending on how much styrofoam you have feel free to do three or four it works kind of nice just this is what i had and um that's kind of what I was going with. Um, it's all very customizable. But we used obviously the thinner pieces for the middle parts and the thicker pieces for the bases there. We utilized this for the um, front. And we're also going to um, cover each bit using this as well. So we're about to continue working on not this, now you can see here one of the issues that I was talking about earlier was that these the tops of these middle pieces are not flat at all and will cause me problems moving on. Now I'm talking about wanting to cut this out. This is, you'll see there's a gap. You need to hold these middle pieces together and sand the top of them. It will be so much easier, neater, and a cleaner product if you just sand them or make sure that they're all smooth and at the same height and width. I went ahead and cut these out and these are the pieces that are gonna be going in here and they'll be covering up some of these ugly imperfection pieces. Um, although this side's pretty smooth, I think that these will just give it a little bit more texture and maybe if I have enough spray paint, I'll go over it again and spray paint it some more. I also recommend, once you have your desired shape and length, make sure you're tracing how long they are so you can make your cuts easier. I use a very sharp kitchen knife to cut these. Um, I would cut a little bit larger above your line. I also wanted to show you guys the spray paint that I'm using in the initial part of this project. Um, now, I do think that you can either just use regular paint or spray paint. Honestly, I might even recommend using just regular gray paint and then get like a glitter gloss or metallic coat that you can spray over it. Uh, I don't really know why I chose to spray paint. I just got it in my head that it would be easier, but I don't think it really was. 
they move a lot and it's kind of easy to run out. So this is exactly what I was talking about when I said if you're not sanding it and making sure everything's the same length, you're gonna have issues. This really does make it look kind of like a cheaper craft than an actual display base. Uh, so do your best to avoid that. Also recommend putting some figures on top to help balance it just to make sure that figures will be able to stand on top of it and it's gonna hold up regardless of how it dries. Now here I'm showing you how you can smooth out the back and just get it ready to put the paper on the back um, because I'm going to attach the paper in those two points um, and you can just see where you're going to want to lay the paper on the back. But some parts are rough and jagged and it's not going to lay super flat and so I need to get rid of that stuff. You either use the sandpaper and I'm showing you how to use fire too because it also can work, but I think the sandpaper is a little bit more controlled and you'll see why, but I do want to demonstrate how to use the fire and that it is a viable technique. So you're going to want to not have it so close because it will just take a chunk out right away. Um, put the heat on a low setting too, if possible, if your lighter allows for it. Um, let's see, it starts to kick in there. You see it dent in a little bit. But again, I definitely recommend using sandpaper because you could just sand away everything and uh, it's messy, but it definitely might be a little bit more controlled than the heat. And so this is the better of the two options, sanding, and you can see the mess there, but it is worth it. I would recommend you hold all the pieces together, like the middle bars and um, sand them together so they're all in even length, all in even height. I didn't do that, but that would have made this process so much easier. So please do that. So there you have it. It is done, it's complete, and I'm satisfied. I think it looks great, and I'm happy I did it. And I hopefully you guys are in, enjoyed it, you enjoyed watching this, and maybe if you attempt it, you'll enjoy your display too. This was a learning experience to say the least, but it also gave me a completely new display, and I'm pretty proud. I wanted to show you guys this unfinished idea for the project too. I'm trying to have like those rings that would go around him, uh, most prominently in the intro to the 90s series, but I put wire in the middle. I don't know, it's just, it, it's a little bit more difficult and I need to be more exact, but I'm kind of burnt out from this project. It took a lot of time. It was about a week, honestly, of hours into this, so. But this still works okay. It can be better, but. It still, it still works and does the job a little bit. But I'm gonna continue working on this. Maybe I'll do an update if I add more stuff to this that you guys can kind of continue building upon. But yeah, just wanna throw this in as well. It's kind of an extra. I'm having a ton of fun messing around with it. I'm thinking of all the possibilities and the, all the cool things that I can do with this, so. As always, thank you for watching, guys. I appreciate your time, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.